Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'd rather call this movie The House of Whack. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The House of Wax, which released in 2005. With a screenplay by Chad Hayes and Carrie Hayes, and directed by Jaume Colette Serra. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Carly, played by Eliza Cuthbert, and her f- group of friends who are heading off to watch the big football game. Along the way, they decide to camp out one night, and one of their cars becomes damaged. The next morning, Carly and her boyfriend Wade head into the town of Ambrose and come across Bo and his brother Vincent, who wants to turn them into wax models for the town's population. I don't know what you expect to see in here. So when this film first released, mm. uh, it was part of like the wave of remakes. Yeah. And I think 2005 saw several remakes, actually. I think it was the same year as The Fog. Uh, yes, yeah. It was also the same year as the Amityville Horror remake. Oh, with Ryan Reynolds. Amongst probably some others. Right. Uh, but at least, you know, it'd been a long enough time. I think you could, I think it was 1953, mm. the original House of Wax with Vincent Price. Absolute classic in Legend. the horror genre. Yeah. Which in of itself was also a remake of Mystery of the Wax Museum going all the way back to 1933. Wow. So this is not, you know, the first remake of the film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then there are other, you know, waxwork type films you know, in the same vein as well such as waxwork which came out in 1988 yeah. and you also had terror in the wax museum in 1973 so there's a lot of you know waxwork type movies i yeah. guess it's a great formula for horror not including mannequins that come to life we already kind of <laughs> covered those yeah yeah <laughs> but uh this is a director that i've grown to kind of like most of his movies didn't really Notice that it was the same guy that directed House of Wax. Yeah. uh, Because he went on from this to direct Orphan in uh, in 2009. Yeah. He also did The Shallows in 2016. And from there, he's gone on to do Jungle Cruise in 2021 and then Black Adam in 2022. Yeah. So his career is, you know, up and down, up and down. You know, it's definitely pleasing some audiences. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) this film, though, was one that I hated when it released Mm -hmm. i watched it again a few years later because i was like oh yeah it's got that jared padalaki guy from supernatural Mm -hmm. he's great oh yeah he was in friday 13th remake and house of wax remake and yeah oh yeah it was the one with paris hilton in it i was like yeah yeah i didn't really get much out of it on the second viewing and here we are now some 20 years yeah nearly after the film came out and yeah uh, um, wasn't very excited about watching this one again. No, I'd avoided this movie like the plague ever since it first released because, well, first off, it's it's a remake. And I, I know what people are going to say. Well, you like some remakes. Yes, but this is a remake of House of Wax. You know, that doesn't scream, hey, you know, you have to watch this. It's going to be an absolute classic. Plus, like Ari said, it came out at that wave of remakes i think the other ones were like 13 ghosts and the house on haunted hill that was the same production company as this one as well yeah so so those ones had kind of done all right but same thing they're remakes of these movies that we already kind of know how the end is going to go and this also had paris hilton in so in 2000 2005 i was just like no i'm not watching it it's got paris hilton in it fuck that shit i'm not just it's, it's not anything that paris hilton could bring to a performance in a movie that would make me go... But Ian, she was just voted amongst the 100 prettiest girls of all time in 2005. Yeah, I didn't vote for her. So, did that, I. That, <laughs> so that didn't mean anything for me. You know, what was it? She was in that fucking... Was it The Simple Life with fucking Nicole Richie? Oh my God, I wanted to kill myself when, whenever I saw an advert for that. You know, with her little chihuahua and a... But didn't you person. see part of the promotion for this film, which was Watch Paris Die? No. Oh, because no. like a lot of fans were also like, well, Paris Hilton in my horror movie? Get that out. Get that out of there. But they actually turned it as part of the promotion and just said, come see this film if you want to see Paris Hilton die. That doesn't make me still want to watch it. Oh. Like, because <laughs> it, when it appeared on the list, I was just like, okay, you know, this is what we do for the show. This We, we bring in a film, even the ones that we don't want to watch. And then I hit play and I realized it was like, what, an hour and 50 minutes? Like almost two hours long? Yeah. I well, c- I mean, the film starts in 1974. Ah. Oh. 
<laughs> it starts with such a shitty flashback. You know, some mum that we can't see is making a wax mask and the dad comes in with one of his kids. They've got a good kid sat there eating cereal that we don't see. And then we've got a bad kid who comes in and he's kicking off and has to be tied to his chair. And so you're like, okay, so whatever these teens are going to get involved in is going to involve these two kids that we don't see. Like, why did you have to hide their faces? What was the... I mean, there's a big reveal. Exactly. It's, I, it's I, part of the but, twist. Yeah, but it's just, <laughs> I think you should have started with the twist <laughs> to make us go, oh, I can't wait to see how this goes. Because then we get to present day and we've got Carly and Paige. Eliza Cuthbert playing Carly and Paris Hilton playing Paige. And the two of them are so excited to get together with their boyfriends and go watch the big game. Like Gary said, we've got Jared uh, Padalecki uh, from Supernatural playing Wade, Carly's boyfriend. I'm making this sound so exciting. It's <laughs> fucking nuts. Well, I mean, nothing really exciting is happening right now. It's just that we have these, these, this pool of... Of, of cannon fodder. Yeah, I know. But, like, you remember in, like, fucking Cabin in the Woods? Mm. You know, when we get introduced to those kids and yeah. how excited you feel when you see them? Because, like, this, this this is more like a parody of Well, it is because we that. have all of our and, archetypes. And it's supposed <laughs> to be more... It's trying to be more serious. I couldn't, I couldn't take this film seriously once Dalton and Nick turn up. Nick is Carly's brother, played by Chad Michael Murray, and he's got his friend... Dalton, played by John Abrahams, who is the main guy from Scary Movie. Oh. He's the main fucking guy from Scary Movie, which I believe he'd done before House of Wax. Right. So well, he's got next to nothing to do in this film except wander around with a camera oh, and remind so everybody as he keeps filming Paris Hilton. Oh, and he's, and he's filming Carly. That's true, that's true, yeah. It's going to be a sweet game tomorrow, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. Dylan, please don't film me. What? Please. So the teens all get together and they're heading off to watch the big game. But Blake, uh, Robert Richard, who plays Paige's boyfriend, he decides he's going to take them on a shortcut. Now, I, I was already annoyed <laughs> because, you know, Wade has to shove everybody in the back of his car, which is tiny. And yet Blake's got this huge, massive fucking truck and is unwilling on carrying anybody. Well, that's because he needs some alone time with Paris Hilton on the road. Yeah, she might be pregnant, by the way. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of subplots in this film that go nowhere, <laughs> including that she might or might not be pregnant, just like Carly may or may not go to New York after the events of the film yeah. with her boyfriend. Well, definitely not with her boyfriend. That's, 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 <laughs> that's the thing. We have to follow, like, 30 to 40 minutes of just acting from these teens, getting them set up, and so they're driving along, and Blake's getting head from Paris Hilton, but then she says that she dropped her lip balm. And I was just like, it would make more sense that she had dropped her lip balm <laughs> because we didn't fucking see anything. And it's so fucking stupid. But this is, the whole film is trying to cash in on the Paris Hilton sex tape, isn't it? It's yeah, I mean, use... she's hyper-sexualized in this film. So is her boyfriend. They're both horny all the time. And uh, and that is all they bring to this film. That's Near it. enough, they really don't have much character beyond that. Yeah. We I... get the sequence where they're all milling around at their, their makeshift campsite. They're throwing the ball, drinking beers, doing whatever. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, yeah, like we, we get it. Like, the film establishes all of the characters, and then it reminds you of who they all are by their, their traits over and over again. Over so, and over. you know, Nick is constantly just super aggressive to Wade, for no real reason. Yeah. You know, and, and... It's just a dick. Exactly. And so we've got these little subplots that go nowhere and we just keep repeating the character traits over and over until something does happen. And I do think it's fairly effective when this truck just turns up with its beams on, just canvassing the entire campsite so that they yeah. can't see the truck. Yeah. And then there's the silence as... Wade tries to defuse the situation because we're constantly reminded he's, he's the, the good, good guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> until, you know, and then Nick, like, oh, he steps up and he's like, rrr, 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 I'm just going to throw a beer bottle. He yeah. throws his beer and he smashes the headlight and, you know, and Dalton's like, yeah, real man, real yeah. man. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And then the truck drives off. So, oh. Yeah. And so, so then. You, but you just set up this completely creepy moment in the woods. Yes. Right. Uh, it's middle of night, and, and, and the guys are just like, well, let's go to bed. 
Right, yeah, Let's we don't not... need to keep a watch. Yeah, we don't we... need to move location. No, we're not We're not freaked out at all by this random truck in the middle of nowhere that none of us have been here before because we've just parked here because this is the quickest route to the fucking big game that we're going tomorrow. Right. And I'm sort of like, where's the House of Wax? Like, what, what, have we, what have we established since the start of this movie that, that we've got two creepy kids that might grow up and now we've got a bunch of teens who are acting like douchebags in the middle of nowhere. And so when it cuts to nighttime and they're all asleep, somebody walks around with Dalton's camera and is just filming Paris Hilton and yeah. and Carly as and they get, Carly gets up at one point and wanders around and oh she gets the jump scare because Wade is immediately behind her. Yeah, Wade's just like, What are you doing out of bed? Let's just go back to bed and she's like, I heard something. I'm like no shit. <laughs> no fucking nowhere. Well, and then morning comes. Or sorry, not morning. Afternoon comes. Yeah, fucking Blake wakes up. He's like, everybody wake up. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm like, what time did you go to bed? <laughs> fucking hell. What did you take? Fucking oh, no, knockout drugs? It looks like somebody's been messing with the car. Oh, only one so, car. Yeah, they, yeah. only messes with Wade's car because... Reasons. What reasons? <laughs> like... You're Maybe trying. couldn't get into the other one. Maybe the other one was super high tech and alarmed or something. I don't know. <laughs> but the fan belt's broken. Man, sorry, I sorry to interrupt, but I, I just gotta keep. I just keep remembering that bit where while they're at the camp, they're like, "It's a bad smell." Oh right. What's that bad smell? Oh, it's a. Re and the film, fucking the wind, like the sound effects of the wind blowing the bad smell towards them. Like, don't go over that way. It smells bad. <laughs> Sounds like something died over there. Yeah. So the next day, Carly and Paige are out in the middle of the woods and, and Carly's taking a piss and Paige isn't sure how to tell Blake how she could be pregnant or not. And the bad smell comes along. I'm like, so the bad smell just keeps disappearing? <laughs> I'm thinking this is going to lead to the House of Wax. They're going to turn it and the smell is coming from the House of Wax. No, no. They just walk through the woods and Carly slips down a hill and falls into a massive pile of roadkill. And we get introduced to Lester, who is this typical hillbilly character yeah. who's, who's driving up and down the back roads, picking up roadkill and chucking it onto this big pile. Yeah, I mean, straight away the film just sets him up as being this kind of sinister character because of the look of his truck, the way it moves, the way he <laughs> talks, the way he handles himself. And then <laughs> how he picks up the hand and kind of makes that, you know, the, the joke. It's such Tucker and Dale. It, it is. It's it sort of like, he's not a bad guy, really. Yeah, I mean, he's set up like as a red herring <laughs> yeah. almost, isn't he? He's like, is this guy one, yeah. you know, like, who knows? Who knows who he is? But he seems helpful and friendly enough. Yeah, yeah. But Gary and I both watched this film, and I had to check with Gary that not once does this character actually say his name is Lester. So they are just walking around with a creepy hillbilly character. Yeah, well, they don't really have too many choices as the rest of them carry on to the football game and Wade decides to stay back and uh, get driven into town along with uh, Carly. With Carly, yeah, because, you know, maybe the mechanic in the town of Ambrose can can help fix this, you know, fan belt or whatever is that's been broken. And it was brand new. Wade knows it was brand new. But the other guys go driving off and I'm thinking, hang on a minute, you're sending the, the rest of the characters off? What movie does that? What movie sets up all these characters to get killed and then sends them off? But don't worry because, spoilers, they're going to get caught in traffic and decide not to go to the big game and turn around and come back. There are so many subplots. It didn't. The, it doesn't even matter to the film whether they went to the game or not. No. It, it really doesn't. Dalton, Nick, Blake and Paige all go, hey, let's go back and find out what happened to Wade and, and, yeah. and Carly. Because they, they've driven to the outskirts of the town. And Lester, the, the hillbilly, he's been set up as this sketchy character because he's got a bowie knife, you know, and his car's got all animal carcasses on the inside. But he's generally just a an okay guy. And he's got to change his wheels so that they can drive over this water a bit. But Wade and Carly are so freaked out by him, they're just like, no, no, let's out because we don't believe you there's a town. And they walk around the corner and there's the town. <laughs> it's such yeah. a film set. <laughs> Well, it is 
is a film set. Like they, it, they, they, they built this entire set, and I, I think they've done a pretty good job at creating a ghost town. You know, and I love the cliche of the old lady looking behind the curtain and then <laughs> oh, coming God, back yeah. again. It's like it, it's pretty effective. The way that it's shot, the way that it's filmed, the eerie, unsettling nature of it. But it had taken too long to get it to that point. Absolutely has. It has. Because for me, this is where the film actually starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and uh, and they walk up to this church. And they uh, you hear the music going on in there and they realize, oh, there's actually a funeral going on. So the yeah. priest turns, he gives them this stern look and they back out. I mean, that's how it looks anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm just going to break the illusion right now anyway, because why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> They're all waxwork. Yeah. Everyone, everyone in all of these locations in the in the garage, the old lady in the window, everyone in this church, everyone in the cinema later on, they're yeah. all waxworks. They're all waxworks. And and that just adds to this unsettling, eerie feeling. Of course, the characters will figure that out at some point they, in the film. Th that's it. It still takes, like I said, this, this movie's like an hour and 50 minutes. We've had like 40 minutes of them building up the teens. Then they get to the town and they still still are caught up in this mystery. Right. Because they meet up with, with Bo. But we don't know it's Bo because, like I said, I don't believe at any point he actually says, hi, my name is Bo. He did, he's just the guy that comes out of the church and says, oh, what are you guys doing here? And Carly and Wade are like, uh, we're, we're looking for the mechanic. And we thought he could help us. Oh, well, I'll take you to the mechanic. Brian Van Holt playing Bo. Just immediately, he's just as creepy as the fucking guy we've just had in the van. And literally, these are the only characters we're meeting. So, of yeah. course, I'm immediately like, well, they're the killers. Clearly, those are the brothers from the start, right? Well, well, well I think, yeah. <laughs> but while they're waiting for him to finish the funeral, they decide, well, they go and spend some time at the uh, the House of Wax. I mean, why not? This why is the film's not? title. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a museum. It, was it Trudy's House of Wax, I think that's what right. it said. And it's, and it's made of wax. It's L a, literally. Literally. That's a, sh that's a shit ton of wax. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what was the fucking... Why? Because it's the film's title. But, bro, I'm sorry. I, I kept... I, I kept thinking this because I, I fucking fell asleep while watching this film because oh. it was so fucking shit and I had to go back and watch the ending all over again and all I could think was okay they're out in the middle of the fucking desert you know you know, but, well, sure I mean I mean the film was filmed in Australia this, in Australia so the set is is sunny right I, I don't believe it rains at any point <laughs> in this fucking movie right so immediately my, my mind's just like logistically you've created this house completely of wax and on hot days during the summer, this house at hasn't all the house hasn't mailed at all. <laughs> no, That's some you, sound structural engineering right there. Like the best, yeah, that is the best architect of <laughs> wax you could ever fucking find. Because the doors, the fucking windows. Are, the only thing I don't think is made of wax is the glass in the windows. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny you should say it, man. That uh, maybe on one sunny afternoon evening, there was you know, too much heat and the whole set burned down. Yes. It actually made the news, actually, because the entire soundstage burnt down entirely while they were filming the, the film's climax. And then they had to rebuild the whole thing. All of the, all of the wax works, the props, oh. all the equipment. It was... Uh, it's kind of a shame considering how much money was spent on it just for it all to go up in, in flames. For them. <laughs> but then they had to rebuild it just to finish shooting the film. So, to keep up with the, the amazing plot that we've, <laughs> we've completely missed, Wade has gone to the house uh, with, with Bo because Bo says, like, hey, I'll, I'll let you into the house. You can use the toilet and I'll get you the fan belt. And then while he's been in there, Wade's been attacked by this masked character. So, like... If you if you hadn't realized about now, you know, Bo and the masked character are the two kids from the beginning, just all grown up. And like Gary said, they're living in this town. They're kidnapping people off the road, you know, breaking their cars or whatever, and then killing them and turning them into wax, wax work figures. So while fucking Carly's outside, or, or while Carly's outside being chased by Bo, we actually she figures out Bo is the guy that's in the truck because she recognizes the smashed front. Yep, and she, she's being chased by Bo, and Wade gets captured by Vincent, the, the guy wearing the waxwork mask. They found a few ornaments in the house with Vincent's name on it, didn't they? Yeah. And <clears throat> there was also a cheap jump scare where Carly looks in the window, or the mirror, and yeah. if you see a mirror in a horror movie, you 
count three, two, one, jump scare. Jump scare, yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, but I do like the fact that they called him Vincent as an homage to uh, Vincent, Vincent Price. Price so, yeah. yeah. Um, but he he takes Wade and he strips him off and he injects him with like a knockout drug, doesn't he? And then he covers him, sprays him from top to bottom in wax. It's the strange apparatus that he puts on his face as well that yeah. to keep his, you know, to make the points, I guess, and protect his eyes, I suppose. But yeah, watching him get head, covered head to toe in wax is one of the most uh, like grueling scenes in the entire film. I mean, it's not. It's not gore or anything, That's but it. it's it's the fact that like a saw trap, you could put yourself in that position, right? And it's it's See, horrifying. I was sat there, yeah, I was sat there immediately thinking this is kind of like a saw trap. And <laughs> Except there's no escape. There's there's no escape, and I would have rather have much been watching Saw. <laughs> <laughs> And so after Wade's been taken out, Carly gets uh, ca uh, captured by Bo um, from the church and she gets taken down into the basement of the mechanics, which is where he works. But Nick and Dalton have ended up coming back to the town because obviously they didn't get to the big game. So Paige and Blake are stuck back at the campsite having sex or 2005 fucking Paris Hilton striptease sex I yeah suppose. yeah um and yeah and uh nick and dalton decide that uh, it's best to split up yes yes we need to search all over the town yeah <laughs> and dalton heads up to the house of wax and he actually goes in and he finds wade in there and it's kind of gruesome because he goes to what well, he goes to help wade and as he's picking at the wax he starts just picking the skin off so you can kind of see the reaction from Jared's eyes you or see Wade's a, eyes. A, a tear roll down his eye. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's still alive, he's in pain, he can't move and stuff like that. And then Vincent attacks with his knives and actually slices half of his face off, which yeah. you watch his eyes kind of roll back, so it's kind of like a shock death kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And I, again, I have to applaud the film for using practical effects. Like the director said in every instance of making the film where they were like, well, just CGI it. He said, no, practical effect. Practical right. effect, practical effect. There is some blatantly awful CGI later in the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, for the most part, I I'm happy with uh, some good old practical effects here. And I, I think that this moment, that sequence from him getting encased in the wax to then having his face peeled to then being sliced open yeah. is is absolutely gruesome and yeah, really haunting. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty gross. But then it's like... With him, and, uh, with Dalton being captured by Vincent, Vincent ends up like decapitating him, doesn't he? Off screen, because oh. you see the knives go in right at the bottom of the yeah. frame. And I was just like, well, you could have done that bit better. But then you see the head and you And it blinks like, for a bit of comedy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, Dalton's dead. I didn't, you know. It's just a non-entry in the film. I predicted that was going to happen. So where are we going next? And so you've got Nick then kind of coming across Bo. And and Carly's had her lips super glue, doesn't she? That's right. So she ends up kind of ripping the super glue off, and she also well, she's also trying to put her hand out of the grate to try to signal to her brother who's up on the street, and and fucking Bo ends up slicing her finger off. So she's actually missing like the whole tip of her finger. <laughs> so I was like, damn, she's you know she's the final girl. She's not supposed to get these wounds until like <laughs> towards the end of the fucking movie. Right. <laughs> Um, but Nick hears our screams and then he takes down Bo and the two of them escape. And um, Vincent's fucking just got into the van, hasn't he, at this point and driven to the campsite. Yeah. Because he's realised that actually, yeah, I've got two more people I need to take out and he's gone to take out Blake and fucking Paige. Yeah. And he takes out Blake off screen, really. Yeah. As, uh, Paige wanders out of the tent and realises he's got a knife in his throat and she runs off screen and... and uh, you know, Vincent just doubles down and makes sure that uh, that he's dead and just steps on the knife just to, <laughs> just to make sure. And we get kind of an extended Paris Hilton running sequence and she ends up hiding in the back of this car. She's holding on to this metal shaft for dear life. Yeah. Uh, but she ends up getting caught and then she runs and then, well, she gets shafted right in the head. She does. She get, He throws that pole right for her face. Well, and I guess the, uh, the foreshadowing of her head bobbing. Oh, all the way down yeah. the pole. <laughs> oh my god, that is so bad. <laughs> it's cause, cause it was like it's supposed to be like Leatherface chasing after the teen, 
but I don't care about the Vincent character. Or maybe I wanted to know a bit more to know if I should care about him or not because he's just a faceless, maskless killer at the moment. And he's, I can, I can understand him killing the people who've come to his town because they're kind of like, you know, breaking in his into, space, yeah, in his territory, yeah, in his space. But the fact he's actually gone out of his way to kill off these two no-name characters that I don't care about, I'm like, yay. Am I am I glad that Paris Hilton is dead because it's Paris Hilton or because it was a good kill? I, I don't know. A uh, bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then uh, Carly and Nick, they end up, they see an army, like army surplus store, don't they? So yes. they break open the window. Yeah. They grab hold of the crossbow. Bo is now chasing after them with a shotgun and they end up running into uh, a movie theater. Yeah, into the uh, cinema, Which is yeah. playing Whatever Happened to, is it Baby Jane? Baby Jane, I think which, it is, yeah. uh, Which is a, a film that's also about uh, a twin type relationship, yeah, yeah. Uh, which of course we'll find out later that that Bo and Vincent were obviously were twins at birth, yeah, and also our two leads now, uh, Nick and uh, oh, Carly, yeah, are, also are also twins. twins yeah. So the film is trying to ha say something Fuck's about sake. the good twin and the evil twin, right from the 1974 bit to all of the the like really non important dialogue between Carly and Nick, where I'm the good twin, you're the bad twin, and did we decide this? Did our parents decide this? Is it because I decided I'm the good one, you just became the bad one? The film says all this, but actually says nothing, nothing really. Yeah. But that's, it's just, the it's a layer that's there. Yeah. But it's it's not as thick as the wax that built the house, <laughs> you know? Uh, but they end up hiding in this uh, this theater. And I think it's a pretty cool sequence where Bo is going around with a shotgun. Yeah. And he can't tell. Like, we get to see the wide shots. And you're like, oh yeah, there's Carly. We can make her out because... You know, she's not the waxwork one, but she keeps moving. Yeah. Bo's moving around. He's checking. He, sh he shoots at one of them. He can't quite picture where they are. Uh, but I also think in the uh, the making of uh, that nearly all of the actors here and in the church, mm. they were extras. They weren't I, actual I, waxworks, but they were people that were there with a mask on. I thought so after a while, because some of the waxwork models, they were so detailed. I was like, you'd have to put in a lot of effort yeah. to create a new individual models. It would make more sense just to get extras and put, and just makeup, put a mask on them. Put yeah. a mask on them, which looks like it's painted and stuff like that. Like like a couple of the kills now, like Bose just starts firing. And I like how when he shoots certain waxworks, like... The, the the body underneath is deteriorated so bad it's just like it's a skeleton or right. there's cockroaches or, or whatnot and so you know you just see it explode but yeah he ends up chasing them out of the cinema and then Bo ends up getting fucking shot with arrows doesn't he and yeah. you're like oh he's fucking dead right well I mean I was like they shot him in the arm and in the shoulder or in the ch upper chest. So I was like, yeah, he's, he's not, not he's dead, dead. But dead. I do like the fact that they are fighting back. Yeah, you know, They're not just cool. running away. Yeah. And uh, so they do kind of leave him for dead. Well, because they've got to head back up to the House of Wax so that they can they get, get Wade. They can, well, they can find Wade and they can get the keys for the car. That's or the, right. the keys for the truck because Dalton's got the keys. Yeah. And so we already know that Dalton and Wade are already dead. But they, they head up to the house and as they're making their way through, Vincent ends up coming back and Carly sees the two dead bodies in the back of the truck. And by this point, I really did not fucking care. I so badly wanted the movie to end like 15 minutes before, but it was just dragging on. And I, I also, I kind of just knew where it was going because, you know, it's your, your, your typical fucking 2000 horror movie where the good guys are bound to get away. But I was just like, how are they going to get away? I really don't fucking care. This is how much this movie just, I hate this movie at this point. Because it, they, they get into the basement, don't they? And they come across Dalton's body. And he's and Nick is overcome with emotion about his friend dying. Or he doesn't realise he's dead until he snaps his head and realises his head's come away <laughs> from his neck. And he's like, oh my God, he's killed my buddy. I was like, am I supposed to care, Nick? Like... The actor, has he given the character enough kudos to make me want to care? Or is the writer not written enough for him? I like how he's very protective of his sister, but it's still a bit icky considering yeah, well, that was... the two of them seem to have more of an incestuous relationship than, say, the love that, you know, Wade and Carly w would share. That's it. It was so obvious he was going to be protective over his sister, though. Yeah. He was protective over her from the beginning. He yeah. didn't like Wade. So once you took Wade out of the picture... 
Nick was bound to be the one. No way fucking Blake was going to take care of Carly at any fucking point. But I like point. that Carly's also able to look after herself and take care of herself for the yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, well, so. well, that's it. I, so part of me was just like, why have we got the Nick character? One's way to be taken because out. Because it's I, twins versus twins oh, for the showdown in the end. Yeah, true. And, you know, and uh, I mean, I, I love the fact that... Uh, you know, Carly takes out Vincent with a goddamn baseball bat and she doesn't stop hitting him no, until he's dead. She takes out Bo with the baseball bat. Oh, sorry, bat. yeah, that's right. And yeah, then yeah. Vincent And then comes Vincent along chases her around. And he's and just like, I'm so upset that you killed my brother. And then she tries to convince Vincent that it was all Bo's fault. Well, it's because Vincent is technically the innocent, is the good twin. Because, How? He, because the, in the very first sequence, he was the quiet one that wasn't misbehaving. He was the one who was being How controlled. How do we know that? The film doesn't reveal that. Because he, cause Vincent doesn't say a word the entire film. He's quiet, just like he was in the 1974 flashback. Right. And also, we do see Bo has the wrist restraint, bruises and, and scars on his wrists, uh, which he had also in the very first scene. So right. we know he was the evil one. I kind of figured that, even and so, though the film hadn't fully revealed it. And but... that's why Carly tries to plead with Vincent, like, look, you were being used by your brother. You don't need to do this. You can... You can stop, please don't. But so it's another layer on top of a really stupid plot. Kind of, yeah. And also, they weren't just twins. They were Siamese twins and separated at birth. Yeah, conjoined Siamese twins. <laughs> conjoined, sorry. Yeah, yeah conjoined twins. Because, well, because, yeah, because it turned out that once they removed them, Vincent was the one with the damage on his face. And so that's why he... Wears a, a waxwork mask. A waxwork mask. mask because mum was making it for him and he was never going to be leaving the the house because of the... Oh, it was so shit. It was so fucking shit. Because... Vincent then goes, I don't care. Well, he doesn't say anything, he grunts. But he's decided that he doesn't care because the whole house is burning down because Nick accidentally set a fire in the fucking basement. So the whole set piece, this final, is the house of wax melting. And it was so shit. It's the worst fucking set piece I think I've ever seen in anything. I mean, I, I, no, 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 <laughs> no, I, no, I, I know what you're saying because you're saying, well, you know, they weren't putting a lot of work to make this house wax. I get that. But the director would have sat there and gone, oh, you know what would be great finale for the house of wax? Is that it's a house of wax and it melts. And I'm like, so yeah. I'm more scared of the house than I am of Vincent the killer. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> when yeah. Carly's rushing across the bed of wax, which is in the bedroom of wax. It's actually made out of peanut butter. <laughs> inside the house of wax, on the second floor of wax. <laughs> She's fucking, I'm more scared that her feet are going to get caught in the wax and she's going to melt through the floor than I am of the, the masked killer who's going to kill her. Because even if he does get a hold of her, what's he going to do? He can't certainly put out this fucking fire. <laughs> He's a fucking moron. And so she ends up, he, he ends up falling through the floor, doesn't he? He ends up yeah. getting wounded, but he falls on top. Of the body of Bo. So he's conjoined which is, again. <laughs> which is already sunk through. And the two of them sink into the pool of wax. In the basement of wax. Underneath the house of wax. On waxy road of fucking... Waxington. Waxington. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you've got also... I mean, um, Nick and Carly, they do also escape through the house of wax's a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah. Because they're like... How are we going to escape? There's fire and there's melting wax. And she's like, the walls are made of wax. Let's dig. <laughs> and so they dig through and they climb through the a-hole. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And then the police turn up because like, oh, we saw the smoke from we miles saw away. The smoke. Oh, didn't you know this town's been abandoned for like ten years? It's not even on the map anymore. So yeah, it's no wonder everyone went missing here. And we uh, have looked we, into it. We found all these missing persons now yeah. inside the, these rooms. Luckily, you two have survived. But oh no, we have found out that there was a third brother who just happens <laughs> to be the shitty ass mechanic with the Bowie knife that we saw to drop off the teens to. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. God, guy. Well, Ian, what were your favourite scenes from House of Wax? Paris Hilton getting killed. And? That's it. Oh, okay. That is, that is <laughs> it. Oh, okay. I'm not justifying so, <laughs> anything more with even visuals. Sure. Sure. I, uh... Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I, quite, I quite like the. I'm going to start right from the beginning and work my way through the movie. 
I like the 1974 flashback. I thought it was uh, pretty good uh, establishing, like, it's a horror movie, so you've got to have some bait. You've got to have a tease as to what's to come. And I liked the the burning wax imagery. I liked the, uh, the sound effects, the music. And then, yeah, it was pretty shocking to see this kid get strapped in, buckled in, and then blimmin punched in the face right at the start before we cut to presentation i was like okay bit of a jolt bit of a shock didn't really know what's going on but yeah i thought it was quite effective for for getting me in the mood for the horror film and then of course the modern day present day 2005 music was then a jolt to like oh god this feels more historical now than the 74 flashback <laughs> yeah, <it> was definitely, <laughs> wasn't it? right um but yeah honestly yeah there's not very many uh, truly great acting scenes in the film. Like, uh, I, honestly, I think, uh, what was he called? Cletus Lester? Lester. You know, <laughs> the no. guy who turns up the trial. I think he was the best actor I I in the film. I thought he, he was very convincing because I was like, could you trust him? Would you trust him? If you were in that position, you wouldn't want to be in the cab with him. You'd want to get out as well. <sighs> Um, like you wouldn't even be in that position once you saw that yeah. creepy truck turn up in the middle the of the night. The night before, right? You'd have been like, I'm gone. Let's get, yeah. let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, but I do think the best scene in the film is is Wade uh, getting um, uh, get getting getting his ankle cut, his Achilles tendon snapped, mm, yeah, uh, and then getting knocked out, waking up, being sedated, being waxed up, and then being found uh, by uh, by Dalton, and then you know, the skin peeling, the face cutting, and then eventually you do see his body uh, in the chair fall into the fire at the end. Yeah, uh, it's just like God damn, like he was he was the nicest guy in the film. And, of course, I'm a big fan of Supernatural as well, which is why I should also bring up yeah. that in Season 5 of Supernatural, there was an episode called False Idols, oh. which was about waxworks or uh, an entity possessing famous historical waxworks. Right. And Paris Hilton gets possessed, or the waxwork Paris Hilton gets possessed, and so you got Jared Padalecki and Paris Hilton... And Wax Work in the same episode, and uh, and Dean turns at one point, he goes, oh, I never saw House of Wax, and Jared Padalecki looks at him more at the camera like, dude, like bad memories. <laughs> See, I'm not a Paris Hilton BFF. I've never even seen House of Wax. Paris Hilton getting the shaft. You yeah. Know, that was good. That yeah. was good. And, uh, and now I've got to say, I enjoyed, I thought it was money well spent towards the end where all the house is melting bit by bit, watching all the waxwork peel off of all of the, the waxwork models mm. and seeing all the layers of decomposition behind them all. Uh, I thought that was very, it created some very haunting imagery as everything was just melting, everything was just yeah, drooping down. You could hear kind of screaming in the background as well, couldn't you? It was like yeah. the town itself was screaming. like some All the souls alive. are being released finally. Yeah, I don't the know. souls are yeah. gone, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian, do you recommend no, House of Wax? Not a fucking chance. I spent fucking almost 20 odd years happily living with the thought that I'd never ever watched House of Wax. And I have to spend the next 20 years trying to fucking delete this movie from my fucking memories. I've seen such shit, Gary. Subspecies makes this movie look fucking amazing. Fucking Halloween and I would do the trilogy. I would do the trilogy before I ever, ever, ever put House of Wax back on. It's two hours of nothing. Nothing. Paris Hilton is probably... To, to say that Paris Hilton's death is the best bit of the, about this movie should tell you alone how bad this fucking movie is because you have to wait for her to die, which means you have to sit through all of her acting, all of her backstory, all of her character dialogue, just the look that she has in her face. I, I don't want to shit on the other actors, but they just, they didn't bring anything. I mean, even Jared Pad Padalecki hadn't, hadn't hit the heights of Supernatural at this point, so he's still fresh. He's better in the Friday the 13th remake. The guy from Scary Movie was better in Scary Movie than he was in this. I didn't care about Carly and Nick. At one point, I even played with the idea that it would have been fun that they were the two fucking kids at the fucking <laughs> beginning and they just happened to kill the two fucking killers in this fucking town. Why did you have to make a whole fucking town? You know, why Why did Bo think, oh, me and Vincent, we're just conjoined twins. We're just going to kill people and make this whole waxwork town. Why? For what? The does, film doesn't make a good horror movie. <laughs> the, the film doesn't tell you anything, doesn't reveal anything. There is no reveal. It builds and builds and builds 
up to nothing. It's like the scum layer at the top of a, bot a fucking pot of custard. You know, you've just made some really good custard and then you just watch it get really scummy and then you go, mmm, now I'm gonna eat it. It's not, it's like wax. It's shitty, waxy, shitty residue and the whole movie just, ah, oh, it should burn. Just like the ending of the fucking set. <clears throat> um, I think I'm still going to recommend House of Wax. Well, you fucking would. <laughs> now, this is something I completely expected to hate, as in memory, it wasn't a film I'd want to watch again, but after this recent viewing, I was surprised at how well certain aspects of the film held up. I also appreciate that this remake wasn't just an inferior rehash, but was creative and told its own story with a similar setting. The, the set, the town, the waxwork reenactments were very well done, very creepy, and effectively used to create an uneasy atmosphere. It's an uncanny valley kind of nightmare, and I really liked the literal House of Wax. The effects were great, minus some dated CGI on Vincent's face, and the performances were all average or just above. You know, working off an, I guess, an okay script. I felt the film was definitely 20 minutes too long. It takes a while to get going, and there's so much time wasted at the start with repetitive character beats, but once the characters end up in the ghost town of Ambrose, it really starts. There are some dumb character moments, there's a fair few predictable jump scares and cliches, uh, but I didn't find it too distracting as the film has some good gore, interesting villains and one very memorable haunting kill that is Nightmare Fuel. So yeah, never used to like this film, you know the one where we watched Paris die, but after re-watching it, I don't think it was that bad, and even now it might just be... The beginning of a modern cult classic. There is a reason they look so real. Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. <laughs>